Good morning, everyone. My name is Valentin Fournel, and I am the Eco Design Director at CTO. Uh, I will tell you about uh, the role of circular economy in reducing the environmental impacts of packaging and papers with the example of France. So, uh, first of all, who is CTO? So, CTO, we are uh, um, a company whose mission is to help our clients, FMCG companies, in reducing the environmental impacts of their products packaging and papers. Uh, as such, we are really at the interface of circular economy in between FMCG companies, sorting, recycling operators, municipalities and consumers. Our ambition is to build a more sustainable world combining environmental and economic performances. Today, when we look at uh, circular economy and environmental impacts uh, from a broader scale, scale uh, we see that we have uh, various environmental challenges. The environmental impact is just, just one criteria. It's made of many, uh, such as, for example, as you can see on this, uh, this picture, uh, the, the ways that we can produce and if uh, not well managed, that can actually uh, become uh, abandoned uh, in nature with its impact that we all know on, um, on biodiversity. Of course, it's also extraction of resources and it's also CO2 emissions and its impact on global warming. And those just three indicators are only an example of uh, a, a lot of different types of indicators that can help us identify what are the environmental impacts of each of our consumption of the products that we produce uh, and their packaging as well. When we look at France, uh, if we look at the average carbon footprint of uh, a French person, it is approximately 11 tons of CO2 equivalent per year. Packaging represents around 0.75% of, um, of this carbon footprint. But packaging has an impact on a much wider perimeter, uh, which represents around 40% uh, of the total, which are, of course, goods and private services and food. We have now uh, an international agreement to try to uh, lower our CO2 emissions and lower uh, the global warming, or at least uh, try to lessen the increase of global warming. In order to reach this global agreement, the Paris Agreement, each citizen needs to lower its uh, carbon footprint from the 11 tons of CO2 equivalent today up to two tons of CO2 equivalent by 2050. This is a huge challenge. And of course, uh, we, CTO, and together with the, the whole uh, packaging value chain, uh, do believe that it is possible, but we need to make the right, uh, the right choices and the right uh, actions. First, maybe it's very important to remember that when we talk about uh, packaging, Packaging is not sold as a packaging. Packaging is sold with a product inside. And the role of packaging is to be able to transport, protect this product. When we look uh, at uh, food products, for example, we see that the packaging represents around 5% of the average contribution to the climate change indicator of a food product. Okay, 5%. Of course, this is... Uh, depending on the product that is contained within the packaging. We can see that, for example, in the case of meat, packaging represents less than 5%, around 3%. When we look at beverages, it could be higher than 5%, up to 20%. However, what is very important to understand with this figure is that the priority of the priority is to keep protecting the product. That's why packaging has a role. And whatever we decide to do, uh, you will see afterwards in the slide. So all the actions that we can undertake should never be uh, while increasing the wastage of the products contained in the package. We uh, currently fa uh, fa um, face main challenges, two main challenges, I would say, which are <laughs> very broad. Uh, first one is how do we actually prepare the future while dealing with the present? OK, so we currently have systems in place that have been huge developments on the market and allows today 
for a reduction of environmental impacts of packaging. However, we do know that it is not enough. We need to go further. And so we need to, uh, to work on the future solutions. And what we know is that the future will be multi-solutions. So while dealing with the present, we will also need to work on the future and identify which are the solutions which will be the most adapted to every um, to every case, to every kind of product, every uh, consumption mode, every distribution mode, and so on and so on. These are really the two challenges that we face. So how do we uh, reduce the, envir the environmental impacts of packaging? We have uh, four main uh, areas on which we, we, we focus with our clients to help them reduce their impacts. First one, of course, is reduction. It's the first action to uh, take when we are talking about eco-design and reducing environmental impacts. It could be reduction of the packaging or reuse of the packaging, allowing to uh, not produce a new one. Secondly, uh, it is improved recycling and recyclability. We'll go more into details afterwards. Third, work on the origin of the material. What can I do to work on the materials I'm using in uh, my packaging to be sure that it has uh, a reduced environmental impact? And then at the end, it's how do we help, how can we help consumers to do the right sorting just? So first, if we look at reduce and reuse. Uh, reduction, as I said, is really the first eco-design action to think about. Why? Because reducing the quantity of packaging allows to reduce the quantity of raw materials to extract, transform and process. It allows to reduce the weight of product to transport. And it allows to reduce the quantity of waste to manage after consumption of the product. So we win almost on all types of indicators when we work on reduction. You can see, for example, on the right, a simulation on our uh, B tool which is a, um, a simplified LCA uh, analysis tool. And you see, for example, between a 35 gram cardboard box and a 25 gram cardboard box that we will uh, win at each uh, stage of the life of the packaging. So if the packaging performance stays the same, okay, to remind you about the 5% that I just talked about before, uh, if the packaging performance stays the same, then the packaging reduction allows for reduction for its environmental impact on all indicators, whether we are talking about CO2 emissions, water consumption, pollution, pollutions, and so on. And this is true for all types of materials. So this is, of course, the first action to, to take. But sometimes we can ask ourselves, okay, what kind of reduction can I do? The most, I would say, the, the one with the most impact with the same performance is, of course, suppress. But can we suppress all type of packaging? No, of course not. The packaging is here for a purpose, once again, to protect the product. However, in some cases, the packaging does not have any protection uh, functionality. In that case, the more packaging we put towards this product and the more impact it will have uh, on uh, the environment. So the best way is to try to suppress this packaging and to work on another way to deliver the functionality that the packaging has. If we look at another type of product on, the, on the, the right chart, we can see that when the product uh, is actually perishable uh, and we can waste this product, then of course packaging has also a role to play to keep uh, this product from being wasted. And that's where we are trying to work on finding the right amount of packaging, the right impact of packaging so that it helps protect the product and it's not too much so that it will higher the environmental impact of the packaged good. So the key is really to find the right amount of packaging for each type of product. When does the packaging allow to reduce the environmental impacts of the couple product packaging? Of course, besides uh, suppressing the packaging, besides reducing the packaging, which could be done by uh, light weighting the packaging, for example, or trying to suppress some elements or to reduce uh, the size of packaging for the same amount of product. Uh, we uh, can also work on developing reuse. But uh, watch out, reuse is not an easy solution that will be there right away. Okay, 
to develop uh, reusable packaging, we need to develop reuse system. And to develop reuse system, we need to work towards upscaling reuse at national level. So if we're talking about France, for example, we need to change practicing and existing uh, value chain to further develop reuse in order to limit the environmental impact of the packaging and to reach regulatory objectives. Reuse on huge distances will not be interesting from an environmental perspective. That's why we need to adapt the system, the reuse system, so that its impact is the, the lowest possible. So when developing a, a reuse system at national level, we need to work on packaging formats and processes. We need to work on communication and mobilization of the consumer. We need to work on collection and recovery systems. We need to work on the logistic, of course, and on cleaning, cleaning standards and cleaning capacity on the whole territory. These are the challenges that we are currently working on uh, regarding the reuse of packaging. So as a summary, you can see here some good practices regarding reuse. Uh, of course, trying to lightweight uh, some of the elements of the packaging is a good practice. Uh, trying to compress the product whenever it is possible, for example, for shampoo, uh, for hygiene products, it is possible. Trying to suppress uh, unnecessary uh, packaging elements, such as the cardboard box or the box around uh, this, uh, this lipstick. It's also working on uh, how can I uh, actually uh, have a, a reuse system for uh, big bottles or flask uh, of, uh, of products by uh, working on much lighter packaging that I will be used to refill the original packaging and then work on the reuse system that you can see, for example, with the startup Cozy uh, on cosmetics, uh, as well as a reuse of trays um, for, for some salad bars that we can find in, in supermarkets. And we have all types now of declination and, 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 uh, uh, and examples of, uh, of good practices in, uh, in reuse. Second, if we work now on improving recycling and recyclability, I will not go into too much detail uh, as we will have another session uh, in April to uh, discuss more uh, in depth this, uh, this subject of recyclability. However, what we know uh, for France is that today we have a 68% recycling rate for all uh, household packaging in France, meaning that we have 3.7 million tons of packaging that are recycled. And why is this important uh, for the environment? It's because recycling those uh, 3.7 million tons packaging every year allows to save for 1.6 million tons of CO2 emissions, representing approximately 800,000 fewer cars on the roads every year. So this is, of course, very important to continue to develop uh, those recycling rates. When we talk about recycling, what does it become? It allows, actually, for the recovery of materials into new products and new packaging. So, for example, we have currently, this is the, the, the state for France, we have a recycling stream for clear PET and colored PET bottles and flasks. OK, that goes back into textile fibers, packaging and so on. We have a recycling stream for all rigid packaging in HDP and PP. We have also a recycling stream for LDPE films going back into tubes and bags. And we are working on new uh, recycling stream to be able to recycle PS packaging, uh, PET trays and PP films. But the streams do not currently exist uh, in France at larger scale. Then besides of plastics, we have a recycling stream for paper and cardboard. We have recycling stream for cartons. We have for steel, for aluminium and for glass. If we look uh, now at the, the recycling rate per uh, different types of material, so 68% is the average for all packaging type. Of course, the reality is very different if we are talking about glass, steel, uh, paper or plastics. So uh, we can see that the materials with the highest recycling rate are currently glass and steel with uh, respectively 85% recycling rate and 100% recycling rate. We have paper and cardboard that are uh, in the average. And then we have work to develop on uh, beverage cartons and aluminum, uh, as well as paper and cardboard. For plastics, we have two different realities. 
we have bottle and flask that will recycle very well with a recycling rate of 55%. And then we have all the other types of uh, plastic packaging that are either the rigid that are not bottle and flask or flexibles, which uh, have currently uh, only a 7.5% recycling rate, which is clearly not enough. But it's also taking into account the fact that in France, it's uh, very new to be able to sort all those new uh, packaging, plastic packaging type. Um, so it's developing and it will uh, be increasing. However, we do consider today when we look at plastic that uh, only 65% of the plastic packaging put on the market in France are recyclable. It's in progress because a few years back we were at 50%, but of course it's not enough. So of the remaining 35%, we have 15% where we have the recycling streams in development. So R&D projects and pilot lines are going to be developed to uh, develop those new recycling streams. The ones for PS, I was talking about earlier, flexible PP and PET trays. And then we have 20% of plastic packaging put in the market in France that are not recyclable and do not have any projects to be recyclable in the near future. So it means that we need to work on eco-design actions to make them recyclable. We continue on the good practices for uh, improving recycling and recyclability. Uh, you can see some examples. So we talked about the, the refill system uh, in the reduction part. Of course, it's even better if those refill systems are made of uh, mono PE, for example. And so we can actually recycle them in the, um, in, the, in the process, in the stream that exists today. We are also working on uh, more generally on monomaterial. How do I go towards more monomaterial? And this monomaterial should be, of course, recyclable, meaning it should have a recycling stream existing in practice and at scale. Uh, and then we work on also, uh, if we are monomaterial, go towards the, the main part. So for example, the paper cup that you can see um, on, the, on this image, uh, the last one uh, on, on the bottom, uh, it is a paper cup that is made from 97% of papers. So we need to develop the solutions for tomorrow. And then it's working if we talk about plastics, on plastics that can be mono resin, so with only one resin. And we have a project uh, currently going on to work on uh, trays that would be only mono PET trays, or also those yogurt pods that you can see that will be 100% made from PS. And work on the origin of the material is the, the third action uh, to think about when, uh, when trying to, to lower the environmental impacts of packaging. Of course, the origin of the material, one of the key actions to take uh, is really to work on integrating recycled content within their packaging. You see some examples, of course, in plastic uh, bottles, trying to go towards more RPT, recycled PET within your packaging. But it's true also for glass, for uh, HDPE uh, plastic packaging, for films as well, so in LDPE. Uh, and of course, also for, uh, for aluminium and steel. So when we talk about uh, the state of uh, recycled content today, of course, the example I just showed you, they already exist, they are on the market, they are possible. However, in the future, what we will expect is to have more examples like this. For example, we've seen now in a few supermarkets in France, uh, this new gray milk bottle. It's very new on the market. It's actually using our opaque PET. So opaque PET, which have been some, uh, have shown some, some challenges uh, to the recycling industry. Today, we actually are able to uh, take them and put them back into a closed loop to make this gray bottle. Of course, we need to change the market because milk that is not in a white bottle can be confusing for consumer. But if you communicate, around why it is gray, then of course it is accepted by the market. We will have also the development of more RPE films um, with more integration of recycled content, especially recycled content coming from post-household consumption, which is the most difficult uh, to do. We talked about recycled content, but of course one other way uh, to work on trying to lower the environmental impacts could be to work on bio-based. Uh, materials. If we look at uh, plastics, for example, so today we see 
already on the market some uh, bio PET bottles existing, so with 30% of biosourced uh, PET. Uh, we have also some bio PE packaging on this market coming from sugarcane. We have also all new types of plastic resins such as PLA, starch base, PHA, PBS, and so on. But uh, those packaging were actually developed while thinking about composting, either industrial or home composting. In the future, what we will see arriving on the market will be working on uh, conventional resins, so the one that already have recycling streams, such as PET, PE, PP, but made from wood, for example, or made from CO2, such as the product that we've seen with L'Oréal and Lanzatec. So these are the challenges that uh, we are facing. How can we actually get out of oil to produce plastic? Uh, and our, uh, our understanding is that we need to focus on currently conventional resin that already exists at scale, that we know how to recycle at scale, but that we need to produce, trying to lower the environmental impacts of the raw material. Okay, so if we look at all this, you can see on this slide all the some examples of good practices that we uh, currently see on the market. And help the consumers do the right gesture. Uh, it's also how do we can we work on eco design to be sure that the consumer will not create some abandoned waste, for example. So we will have soon on the market only uh, bottles with uh, solidary caps. This is of course very interesting. We are currently working also on sleeves on bottles. Uh, to be sure that it is separated not by the consumer, but within the process of collection, sorting and recycling. Now you will tell me, but how do we work on all this? Uh, so of course, uh, CTO is here also to, to help companies in, in trying the, the, right, uh, the right solutions for their products, for their uh, processing lines, for their distribution system and, and, and consumers. Uh, so first we work on R&D and innovation. How can we actually create, accelerate the development of new solutions for tomorrow? Then we work on how uh, to actually, um, uh, well, share all this information uh, with uh, all the, the, the potential partners, with all clients, all companies, so that they know that the solutions are out there. So it's, uh, we are working on information sharing, uh, tools, services, and support to help, um, to help companies. And then, uh, at uh, last but not least, uh, fee modulation to encourage uh, the change and the eco-design actions. So if we're talking about R&D and innovations, just one slide to tell you a little bit how we work. We have a, a, a project, R&D project that we can conduct either uh, on our side with technical uh, centers, such as uh, the CTP, for example, for the, the paper uh, industry, we work also with CTCPA or IPC, which has technical committees uh, focusing on plastics or alimentarity uh, or, um, or new development of, uh, of packaging and materials. Then we also uh, do call for tenders for companies to work on specific solutions that uh, could happen on the market. So it's all what we, you see on this, uh, this slide, the appel à projet on recycling and eco-design. We also have technical uh, committees with the whole value chain to develop knowledge around the recyclability, the sortability, uh, and the reusability of packaging. So it's, for example, Cotrep, CEREC, uh, that you can see here and then uh, uh, have been active for, uh, for several, uh, several years or even decades. Uh, we have also a program called CTO Prospective, which allows to scout for uh, future technologies such as uh, CO2 to make plastics, uh, as I told you earlier. And we have also this uh, absolutely uh, wonderful program called the Circular Challenge, when we are able also to source startups from all over the world to identify all the uh, projects, the new solutions that are currently being developed, and then try to accelerate uh, their coming on the market, uh, together with also uh, trying to get them funding, to get them meet uh, clients and companies so that we uh, find really the best solutions for tomorrow. So we will go very quickly on this. Then if we talk uh, about, sorry, the information tools, services and support, 
So we have a lot of uh, different tools that you can use, um, uh, such as webinars on eco design. Uh, we have plenty of information on eco design uh, guidelines uh, that you can use from the different technical committees uh, that we that we have. Uh, good practices also that we we want to share so that everyone knows that it does exist. Then we have tools. Tools uh, less is our newest one that uh, actually uh, was out in uh, last November, which is a, a methodology guide to help you in reducing your packaging. So it's really uh, giving you all the questions that you need to ask yourself when trying to reduce their packaging and see if maybe you can come up with new solutions with less packaging while keeping the same performance of uh, product protection, of course. We have Phil, which is really for uh, people who wanted to start an eco-design uh, action or an eco-design, uh, I would say, um, strategy. Uh, so trying to, to, to fill in some checklists on uh, where to start. We have then TRI, uh, which is a, a, a tool to help you assess the recyclability of your packaging. We will ask you very specific questions on your packaging. And at the end, it will say, OK, is it recyclable or not? what will be the recyclability rate and so on. And then we have B, which is really an, an expert tool to help you make some uh, simplified LCA to, uh, to choose between different uh, packaging solutions and identify the ones that have the less impact on the environment. And uh, at the end, we also have, of course, uh, this fee modulation trying to uh, to accompany towards uh, better uh, packaging that will be uh, less impactful on the uh, environment. So this is uh, done for today. I hope uh, it was a clear on interest. And of course, do not hesitate to ask any questions that you can send me uh, by email or some other ways. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye.